What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be the third and final Hammett mount video that we've done. We built the McLean Metalworks Hammett mount which plugs right into your hitch receiver. We also built the tire mount that goes with that. We built the Harbor Freight hitch rack Hammett mount. And in this video we are building the rooftop Hammett mount, which is what I'm in right now. Right on top of the 4Runner. Got an awesome view out here today. Now before you go to the comments and tell me how dumb of an idea this is, I've designed this one to work just as well on the ground as it does on top of your vehicle. So if you want to throw up your hammock in the backyard and you don't have too good trees to mount to, this will work perfectly for that. If you are going to put it on top of your vehicle, you're definitely going to have to do this one at your own risk. This is the last chance to enter the giveaway. I'll have a link in the description below. We're giving away four Kutek hammocks. One of those winners will win one of the hammock mounts that I've built. If you haven't seen the other hammock mount videos, definitely go check those out. It's going to help you out in these videos. So yeah, let's head over to the shop and get started on this build. All right, I'm cutting this down to 48 inches because this is about the width of my roof rack. That's where we're going to start at least. If we need to trim it up, we'll do that. For this one, I kind of have an idea of what's going to work, but I'm not 100% on it. So be sure to watch the end because this one might change a little bit. Now the criteria that I have for this build is that I want it to work for pretty much anybody's roof rack, not just a custom one like mine. And I'd also like the rack to work on the ground. So just in case you didn't want it on top of your roof, you can just throw it on the ground, hang up your hammock if you didn't have a place to hang it up. The only other company that I've seen that makes something like this, or used to at least, is a company called Trail Nest. But according to their Instagram, I think they quit production in 2019. Their mount was really cool. It had these arms that kind of folded down into the mount. So it deployed open and you just hook your hammock right straight to that. But instead of replicating that hammock mount, I just wanted to build off the last two videos that I've done and make something that's a little bit more DIY friendly. So what I'm thinking is we'll build a mount that will bolt to our roof rack and then we'll just use the same support poles that we've used in the previous two videos It'll just plug right into that. We can hook the hammock into that and be done with it. So it'll be a pretty simple design. So for this build, I'm gonna start with a two by two piece of square tubing. I've already cut it down to 48 inches long. I cut it to this length because it's a little wider than my roof rack. You want a little extra room. You want your roof rack to kind of sit in between it just like that. And we're also gonna be using more of this inch and a quarter water pipe that I got at Lowe's. The internal diameter is inch and a quarter, but the outside diameter is about an inch and three quarters. I've used this in the previous two builds. So if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go watch those. It'll probably help you out in building this. One thing that'll be a little bit different with this, in the previous two mounts that we built, our inch and a quarter pipe kind of kicked out a little bit. So it was angled outward and then away from our vehicle. For this mount, we want them angled outward but we want everything to be straight in line with the mount itself. So we don't want anything kicked out because we want all the weight, once we're on the hammock, to be going straight down. We don't want any torque to be placed on the, um, the roof rack. So yeah, the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna cut our two by two square tubing so that we can weld our one and a quarter inch pipe inside of it. But we need to figure out what angle we need uh, this to be welded at. So yeah, let's do some quick math and figure that out. So our entire angle, 140.6. Keep in mind, this number just gets you in the ballpark. Your numbers might be slightly different than mine, even though I know these numbers will work perfectly. This crude drawing represents a 100% rigid structure, one that doesn't move and flex. In reality, the support poles have quite a bit of play in them. They're going to bend when weight's on it, and then you're going to have some fabric stretch. So yeah, this is just going to get you in the ballpark. Be sure to do plenty of mock-ups. You may need to do some adjustments to this angle to get it just right for your specific build. So yeah, 140.6, that's the angle that we're going to go with. So now we just need to take our square tubing. I've already marked on the bottom where 36 is, right about here. And now we just need to mark about a 140 degree angle right there about here. And then we'll cut so that we can weld in our inch and a quarter pipe just like that so this is what we got bottom side top if you don't have an angle finder and you're doing something very similar to this 
Just mark six inches on the bottom. A little less than four inches, it's like three and seven eighths. And then do an angle between the two and that should give you about 140 degrees. So now we need to cut out the top and the bottom so we can put our inch and a quarter pipe inside that. All right, now we're gonna take our water pipe, find this at Lowe's, this is a five and a half inch section. So now we're gonna take our pipe, we're gonna place it on the opposite side of the mark from our end, and then we're gonna trace it out on this back side. So now that you have the semicircle marked, we're gonna measure from the center back two and three eighths of an inch. Perfect, that's two and three eighths. Now we're gonna bring back our pipe, we're gonna set it on that edge. And now we're going to trace out that semicircle again. So now we have our bottom oval marked, our top is marked. You can kind of see what we're doing here. Our water pipe will go through right like that at that 140 and a half degree angle, just like that. So now we're just going to cut out these ovals and our pipe should just slide right through perfectly and we can just weld that up. So yeah, let's cut these out. All right, so on the bottom we have the side that we cut with the hole saw. It took a lot longer, but it looks pretty clean. And then this is the side that we cut with the jigsaw. It's a little rougher, but it went really quickly. And I think this was totally fine, actually. So yeah, let's see how well our pipe fits. Oh, that is so perfect. Look how clean that is. There's literally no play in this at all. Trying to wiggle it back and forth. Those measurements worked out perfectly. Now all I need to do is weld this thing up and I'll probably trim some of this off, but a five and a half inch piece works perfectly. All right, I've got my metal all cleaned up on both sides. A flap disc on the angle grinder makes quick work of that. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. Make sure you don't have any coatings on your metal. Uh, galvanized paint, whatever it is. Just make sure you're down to bare metal before welding. This water pipe that I'm welding is galvanized, so I've removed that galvanized coating on the outside. It is still galvanized on the inside, but we can't do anything about that. So just be safe, don't hang out in the fumes. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and just be conscious of what you're breathing. So yeah, we're ready to go. Let's get all this welded up. All right, we got the pipe welded in. Not my best welding work, but it'll do for this. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna build a rack for it. So I want like a little platform, some area where we can stand up. I just tacked on this one inch square tubing. This is two feet long and this is just a test. Remember, I want this to work on the ground as well as on the roof rack. And when it's on the ground, it's not gonna be bolted anything. So I feel like it'll be more likely to tip. So I just need to see what works. So I just put this two foot section on just to see how it does. So let's go test it out. All right, let's test this thing out. Uh, this is perfect. This seems very stable to me. See how much you have to swing it to want to tip. There it goes. You have to swing pretty aggressively to get this thing to want to lift. But this is perfect. I think a one foot on each side would be more than adequate. Not touching anything. I'm not hitting my poles. This is great. All right, I'm just mocking things up to see what my options are based on how much metal I have. There are so many different ways that you could go about this. And I thought about just disguising it as a basket rack and then you could just have extra storage you know, when you're traveling. But I think what I want to do is I want the entire rack to be a platform. I don't want to be tiptoeing around on top of the roof rack or on the roof and possibly damaging something or tripping and falling. So I want a nice solid platform. So I'll probably end up building something similar to this and have expanded metal going across the entire thing. That way we have a nice solid platform 
that's, that's nice and safe. So yeah, I'm gonna get to work on this. All right, I just cut three slots out with my plasma cutter because I want the rack to fit down in these slots and everything to be as low profile as possible. But man, the Cut 55 DS from Yes Welder, this thing is quickly becoming one of my favorite cutting tools. I really haven't used this thing much until now and I finally have figured it out and this thing cuts so well. But yeah, super happy with that. Now that those are cut, we're gonna take our two foot sections these will go down just like that. And then we'll have our expanded metal across the top here. So I was going to weld it up just like you see here, just to keep it nice and simple and cheap. I think I spent like $15 on this entire project because everything that I have is either cut off or recycled from a previous project. The rusty piece of two by two that we're using in the middle is a cut off from a gate that I'm building. And then one inch tubing came from my old roof rack. So yeah, this entire project has been really cheap so far until I went and bought the expanded metal that we're gonna be putting across this thing. That stuff is expensive. But I've decided against this design and I'll show you why. When we put our expanded metal across here, we have this funky gap right there so the expanded metal is not supported and it's just gonna look really bad. So while I was out getting the expanded metal, I got some one by two tubing. I think this is like 16 gauge, 14 or 16 gauge. So this will be welded on something like this. When we put the expanded metal on, that's gonna look so much better. So not only will this look a lot better, it's gonna support the expanded metal all the way out to the edge, but my goodness was this stuff expensive. I bought a 30 by 38 sheet of 13 gauge expanded metal with a one by two that was 10 feet long, and that was $130. That's crazy. So yeah, I kind of blew, blew the budget on this one. But it's gonna look good, and that's all that matters. I also got new shirts in today, so this is keeping my spirits high. <laughs> so yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut down the expanded metal, it's a little big right now, and we're also gonna weld up our one by two to the frame that we built. So let's get to it. TIG welding these caps on the ends just to just to make life harder than it has to be. MIG welding is so much easier, but I need to keep up the practice. It's all tacked in place. I think we're ready for paint. Got all the ends welded up. Everything looks really nice. What I think I'm gonna do is for the support poles, I want everything to be attached to this like while we're traveling. What I think I'm gonna do is just feed some straps through the expanded metal. That way I can just strap the, the uh, support poles that go in our ends right here. I'm gonna just strap it down to here and everything can be you know, self-contained on top of the rack. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do, just keep it simple. Let's get this thing painted. I wanna quickly mention that the support poles that I'm using to hold my hammock are the same ones I built in the previous video. All the pieces are 30 inches long. We have two pieces that are one inch by 30, and then these are three quarter inch by 30, and these just fit inside of each other. Just like that. We welded on little rings to act as stoppers like that. And then on this end, I just welded on a tab, drilled a hole, and that's what I clipped the hammock into. But yeah, just wanted to mention that. All 
All right, just finished priming the support poles and I figured I'd talk about my painting process that I found works really well. I use this for most of our projects. So the first thing I do is I sand everything down with 100 grit, 150 grit sandpaper, and then I wipe everything down with acetone, make sure it's really clean. And then I prime with a Rust-Oleum Professional Primer. You can get this at Lowe's. Uh, I do several light coats, just a couple minutes apart. And then after that's dry to the touch, it only takes about 10 minutes. I use Rosolian Professional. This is the high performance enamel and flat black. I don't sand in between the primer and the top coat. I would if I let if the, if I let the primer sit for several days, I would come back and I'd scuff this primer, clean it, and then top coat. But if it's fresh within 10 minutes or so, I go ahead and top coat, several light coats, a few minutes in between, just like the primer. And then the key to making this be really durable is you don't touch it for several days. I like to let it hang up for like a week. I don't touch it at all and um, let it cure up. If you use it like the very next day and things are touching the paint and bumping into it, you're going you're gonna to mar it up. It's still going to be a little bit soft. So this seems to work for me. Just want to mention that. All right, we got this thing nice and painted. The only thing else I want to do is want to add these straps. I found these straps called clutch straps. These are really cool. They don't degrade in the sun. And I'm going to weave those through here so that we can hold our support poles right across this way. And you just thread them through like that and strap it down. That seems really solid. I'd never heard of these before. I came across them online, and apparently they don't like degrade in the sun, and they don't loosen up on you and fall start falling apart like some straps do. Man, I really like that. There we go, man. That seems really solid. All right, we got the support poles strapped in place. Really like these clutch straps. I kind of wish I could have run them this way, but this expanded metal that I got wouldn't have been wide enough to, to turn it. Um, I'd have to do a little modification to be able to, to run them this way, but it's not like it's that much wider than the rack itself. But anyway, next thing we need to do is get this thing mounted up on the vehicle. So I designed this so that I can have it mounted lengthways or across like this. Mounts up really easy. I'm just using some U-bolts with some star knobs. So yeah, let me get this mounted up. Alright guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I've really enjoyed this build. I've really enjoyed the whole build series on these hammock mounts. It's been really fun to do. I hope I've inspired somebody to get out there and build something a little bit different. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure to do so. Also hit that bell notification. I don't upload very often, so this will allow you to be notified when I do upload. Also be sure to enter the giveaway. I'll probably run that for a couple more weeks. We'll see you guys in the next video.